Hi, my name is Daniel Todd. I am the Director of Quality Operations here at Faraday Future. Uh, we are here with Monroe & Associates. They are doing a benchmark of not just our vehicle, this is an early prototype vehicle, but comparing that to some key competitors for us. We've got a, a Maybach S-Class in the background they've been working on as well as some others. I uh, really want to get their view on what they're seeing as key uh, wins, key gaps, uh, any issues that they're finding so that we can attack any of those at this stage of the game so that when we get the vehicle ready for the customer, we've really hit the home run with it and we've identified every opportunity that we can. So utilizing their expertise, as you can see, plenty of, uh, plenty of notes on the vehicle. They're looking at really making sure they're looking at every evaluation from fit and finish, function, uh, user experience, everything we care about that we want to make sure we deliver really well to the customer and get all of that feedback in now. And uh, just a, a good partner to work with to make sure that we're learning everything we can as early as we can to make the vehicle better. Hi, I'm Chris Furlan with Monroe & Associates. We're here at Faraday Future doing an FFQ or fit and finish quality report on the new FF91 vehicle. So as we walk through, we can show how we're going about it. Um, we're checking all the individual gaps for flushness and for width dimensional changes that go between hoods, fenders, lights, etc. And we do this from the beginning uh, the front of the vehicle all the way to the rear. <clears throat> Initially we start out with a full walk around of the vehicle where we do a visual analysis and we um, highlight any items that we find any issues um, or eye-catching features both good and bad. Uh, things that we may not see in another type of vehicle um, or maybe something that the future of vehicles is leaning towards and moving in that direction. So as you can see, the Faraday FF91 has quite a few uh, features that aren't typical on your normal vehicle. Uh, one is the charging lights that come along the bottom here on the exterior. Additionally, you'll notice that there are no actual door handles. Um, it's all by touch. Do you have this locked? There it goes. So when you get inside the vehicle, you can then see that we have a full center console touchscreen and what they call the propeller, which gives us our um, gauge display as well as a full LCD uh, tablet for the passenger side. <clears throat> All the doors and everything are touch point, so you don't have um, to utilize the mechanical door lift. You can just use the button. Rich, I'm going to shut this on you, sorry. And it will auto shut the door. You can also do this through the main tablet system and open or close all doors at once. So one of the great things we've seen about this vehicle is that in the rear seats, we actually have what are considered zero gravity chairs. So they can be reclined along with leg rests that come up and give you plenty of room to be relaxed as, as the passenger in the vehicle. Um, what this vehicle doesn't have currently is the uh, backseat entertainment system, but those will be incorporated in the future production vehicles. <clears throat> when we come around to the rear, um, we see something that's a little different in the way the design is. Obviously very sleek and aerodynamic in the styling. Um, as well as the char charge port on the right-hand passenger side <clears throat> and quite a large boot that gives you plenty of space even with the reclining seats. Now what you're seeing here is some of our associates that are doing the actual flush and gap measurements and they'll go along each individual trim line and they'll gather that data which we then put into 
our charts and our final report to the customer. This vehicle is being compared to two competitive vehicles. One of them is the Maybach that we have over here, it's the Maybach S-Class. And the previous one was the Bentley Bentayga. Hi, my name is Timothy Atchison. I'm a lean design consultant at Monroe and Associates, and we are doing an FFQ on the FF91 here. So this is my partner, Han, and right now we are fit checking the fit and finish of all the gaps back here. What he's doing now is using a feeler gauge to tell how far away this panel is separated off of this black trim piece. All the numbers that you see around here are marked points so that we know where to hit the gap and the flush for every one of those points. And then I'll take a picture of those. And then that way when I'm writing the report for the customer, I know exactly where we measured. And that way we can tell the slope of the line where it gets bigger in certain areas and where it's very thin in other areas. As you can see, we're only doing these two lower gaps right now. And they have the same numbering on both sides. That way it's easier for the customer to tell which side has a larger gap or which side has tighter tolerances. My name is Leonard Page. I'm an engineer with Monroe and Associates. And today we are taking uh, effort measurements on different controls in the vehicle as part of the fit and finish study. I'm using an effort gauge, which is very sensitive, so you have to recalibrate it about every single time you move it. But here's about how it works. I'm going to be measuring the effort required in newtons to release this door lever. So, place it on. That measures the peak. Unfortunately, I think it bottomed out, so I'm going to have to do it again. There, that's like half. So I'll record this, do it several times, and we take the average. So. I'm Rich Chayefsky, I'm with Monroe & Associates. I'm a senior consulting engineer. And what we're doing today is we're taking gap and flush measurements on the Faraday FF91. So uh, basically we are using uh, calibrated tools to do that. We have calipers here, calibrated gap uh, feeler gauges. And so basically we're just going in and um, taking some measurements. And we're trying to get the gap in between the doors close as possible. And so we're at about 47, 469. And then we're marking it on the car here so that the person that's assisting me, Jack, can come in behind me and document these numbers on our spreadsheet so that we can get a comparison between all the vehicles that we've done. Calipers are a little bit more easier to use in these types of gaps than the feeler gauges. So we're trying to use the calipers in these situations. Yeah, the goal is to have them all the same, but it's also uh, to have them smaller, as small as possible. 